properties and the the seemingly more energetic gas you have with Brown's gas. Yeah, that's pretty obvious when you have a torch running on electrolytic gas as compared to a hydrogen and oxygen tanked torch. Right. There's a definite difference. And so I basically, that's basically the, you know, I basically said, and so then my conclusion was basically, you know, there's, hydrogen actually definitely does do something. You know, how do you get the hydrogen? You know, there's several methods and that, you know, electrolysis, if that, you know, if we could prove that that would work, that would probably be, you know, the best method. And so I was basically saying that we really need to try a real test and not just try to simulate it or, you know, all these different things. You know, do do a real test. And so that's that was basically my paper. Yeah, well, that's, I think it's very commendable that you uh, took it upon yourself to, uh, you know, go, boldly go where no one has gone before because had there been some prior work that was well publicized, you would have referred to it in your own work. Yeah. Well, I only found that one from Turkey. Interestingly enough, it seems like the studies that are favorable are not in the United States for some reason. Yeah, and that's quite a shame in view of the fact that it was in the United States during the 19th century that so much was done to patent this technology, mm -hmm. showing that there were people like yourself interested in proving that it is a viable energy technology, and yet um, although we have the patent evidence of their work, there's not much else. Right. Well, Jake, it's been very nice, uh, you know, in, in particular the fact that you are 27 years old, you're fresh out of the university, and you're willing to run with this. Mm. And uh, I know there are other young people, many of them, who perhaps are not as enthusiastic as you about this particular subject, but only because they just haven't been made aware of it and, and recognized it as their own personal calling, as you have. Right, but, um, right. I think it's it's a great thing that you've taken it upon yourself to to actually travel across the country, show up at some events, and share this information, and let it be known that you're willing to continue to work in this field. And hopefully someone, perhaps even listening to this program, is going to give you the opportunity. Well, I'm basically just waiting for, you know, somebody to, you know, decide that my work is, you know, you know has some merit and, you know, is willing to, you know, put it to the next the next level because that's really all we need. I mean, I think that we just need some somebody to really who has money to really believe in this thing and, you know, say, well, we're gonna we're gonna go for it and see what happens. Right, and apparently that is happening in various locales around the country and out of the country. And Ron Motors is just one example of that. And it looks like right. they're getting ready to launch a totally different business, not having anything to do with their Scorpion, I think it's called, their sports car. Right. Um, they're they're talking about um, utilizing Amco dealerships throughout the country to install their, I think they call it an H2Go system, right. on, on fleet vehicles for FedEx and I don't know who else. You can go to their website, Ron is spelled R-O-N-N motors.com. And I actually think I sent them a resume, oddly enough. <laughs> oh, great. No, I've been looking for a job pretty, like, um, you know, pretty intensely the last few months, you know, getting ready to be done. And, you know, that, that I actually sent them a resume. You know, because no, I'd, like, I'd really work, like huh? to work, I'd really like to work in a, you know, a job where you can make a difference. So. Well, hopefully that opportunity will present itself soon. And uh, I know you have a, a young family that's uh, uh, increasing, and so uh, it's good that you're uh, looking out for that responsibility and, and wanting to fulfill your responsibilities a family had while at the same time helping the, the average Joe who's driving and, and helping to create a better environment for your own child and, and everybody else's children and grandchildren. Yeah. And that's the way it should be, you know. Um, they always say that we should look for a job that we would do as a hobby. And for yeah, many of us, sure. this is our hobby, you know. So yeah. hopefully you can also find some uh, lucrative uh, work in this field. I think what would benefit everybody is to be able to do some kind of a 
PhD and get the stuff published. And I think that would help everybody if like they could say, okay, well there's this paper done at this university, you know, and they found that it worked. And then I think that would solve a lot of people's, you know, problems as far as, you know, getting getting investment to do this work is is having um you know, some data that you can yeah. count on. So well, there was a um, a recent uh, article, and I hate to to sound negative. It's not like I want to harp on this this kind of uh, propaganda that's out there. But this is an August fifth, two thousand nine article that was in Scientific American. Can mm. cars use water for fuel? Right. And um, you know, it's actually I guess it's an online article. It says, "Dear Earth Talk." I've heard that cars can be modified to run on water. How is this possible? And, you know, it's it's just all negative. Right. You know, so when Scientific American is coming out with things like this, popular mechanics and so on, and by the way, I did want to mention that, that Ron Maxwell, in my conversation with him earlier this week, he said that he personally, he and, and one of his associates went to the popular mechanics people, actually went to them, and tried to talk to the individual who's written this, these negative articles about hydrogen boosting. Right. And he said the guy is so dead set in his line of thinking that there's no amount of showing him, you know, uh, actually demonstrating something to him. It's not going to make him budge. Right. He says these well, people are know, just against hydrogen. Well, you have people like that, and sometimes you just have to shake the dust off your feet and move on. <laughs> yeah, that's you a know. good analogy. I, I appreciate your bringing in that uh, that Christian analogy because I, I think that there's uh, there's a lot of parallel lines here that, that go beyond energy and it doesn't Basically, apply. you're not going to convince the uh, na the naysayer, so you might as well just, you know, just say, <laughs> don't pay any attention to them. Well, that's the, what Mr. Know, Maxwell said. He said, yeah. what we want to do is actually just go ahead and do something. We're not worried about these people. He said, we did yeah. try to reason with them since they were spewing out some negativity. He says, what we want to do is build cars and build devices that work and just forget about them, you know. Right. So that was encouraging to hear. I like that kind of spunk, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in the face of, of uh, official uh, academic opposition. And it's nice to see that you two have uh, actually, you know, it, you are putting your neck on the line when you – go about promoting something that the the, world, the academic world considers to be a bunch of hogwash. Yeah. And so, you know, you're to be commended for, for having the, the guts to do that. Well, it's getting late, and I know that uh, we've used up our half hour, so thanks again, and I hope that our uh, conversation will help to enlighten others as to what uh, young people in school can do to promote uh, clean energy technology. All right. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Take care and have a good evening. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.